This is the type of heat damage that can happen to your hair if you're like this woman who straightens her hair while it's wet. Hi, my name is Serena. I'm a bioengineer and trichologist in training who breaks down the science of hair care so you can learn more about your hair and the products you use. These images are actually from a case study in a trichology journal where a woman had mentioned to a trichologist her hair is really dry and brittle. And it turns out not only was she straightening her hair, but she was straightening her hair while it was wet, causing her hair to split and actually form bubbles from the inside. And I thought it'd be really cool if we test to see if this is just something that can happen to her or if it can happen to you, even if you just do it once or twice. And we're going to test this by using some sample hair strands, and this is actually my hair. Now, I do use some heat on my hair, primarily from diffusing, but I want to see if my relatively healthy hair can actually form the same time types of splits and breaks that she experienced. To test this out, first we're going to take pictures of the hair before we straighten it. This is just so that we have a benchmark to see how much the hair changed after we actually straighten it. We're actually gonna apply water and then straighten all of the hair strands so that we can compare if water makes that huge of a difference when it comes to straightening your hair. Now, generally we know you shouldn't straighten your hair when it's wet unless you're using some special device, but I think it'd be cool to see at a microscopic level if the damage is actually real. Now let's get started. Normally split ends form when your cuticle, which is the outermost layer of your hair, actually breaks into your hair strand, causing fraying into your hair strands. And this fraying is known as split ends, which is why the cuticle is super important when it comes to your hair health because the cuticle is basically protecting the rest of your hair from damage and if your cuticle becomes damaged it can actually damage the rest of your hair but if the cuticle is mostly intact there still can be damage that happens to your hair and this is why we see these hair bubbles but in general even if your cuticle is still intact damage can happen to your hair your hair basically has these three types of bonds hydrogen bonds ionic bonds and disulfide bonds hydrogen bonds and ionic bonds can break and reform whenever your hair gets wet from heat. And also for ionic bonds, the pH of the products you use can also make and break the ionic bond. And as you can imagine, this constant breaking and reforming causes stress on your hair, specifically to the keratin chains inside your hair. Keratin chains are stored in something called the cortex. And the cortex holds a lot of important proteins and structures for your hair that kind of make your hair hair. And that includes keratin chains. Now, remember that I mentioned that your hydrogen and ionic bonds can break and reform with heat and with water, and eventually at some point cause a strain on your hair. Well, this strain can actually happen to the keratin chains in your hair because the bonds in your hair are formed within the keratin chains. And this is also why products that focus on hydrogen bonding and ionic bonding in your hair are also really helpful for repair because these bonds are literally on the keratin in your hair. Now I didn't mention disulfide bonds yet but I am now. So disulfide bonds are the strongest bonds in your hair and they can also break from chemical services, bleaching, and also heat damage. And it is a lot harder to break disulfide bonds because they are a stronger bond, but excessive heat can still impact it. Now there are disulfide bonding repair products like Olaplex and even K18, but disulfide bonds are bonds that you really want to protect because they really impact your hair shape, structure, and strength. And they also impact the bonding between keratin fibers in your hair and weak keratin fibers makes weak hair. And I say all this because not only can heat affect your cuticle, but it can also make your hair weaker. So you have to be really careful in general when you're using heat tools. Now, when it comes to the bubbles in your hair, here's what I think is happening. Now you have something called the cell membrane complex and essentially is the glue that holds your hair together. When you wet your hair, your hair actually swells or the diameter gets larger because water is absorbing into your hair. So you already have the water in your hair. And then if you straighten your hair, especially at a temperature, temperature like 420 degrees, this would cause the water to boil. And that water boiling or steaming in your hair is causing some pressure changes in your hair, forming those little bubbles. So it's really important anytime you do anything to your hair that you're super gentle, but also you're using whatever tools and products correctly because you never know what type of damage you can be causing. And with that little explanation, let's get started with the experiment. We have my straightener, which is now heating to 450 degrees and we have our eight hair strands. But before we apply the water or the heat, let's take some images and videos of the healthy hair strands. We're using my handheld microscope for this one and all, people ask me all the time where I got my microscope and this is called a dinoscope. It's actually like a research like microscope um, and I actually used to use a dinoscope when I worked in a research lab and this is actually a $1,200 microscope but there's like uh, like $100 and $30 microscopes on Amazon that like you can um, use but it's not quite the same as this one but 
Yeah. <laughs> and then we're also using this handheld microscope stand because it's kind of hard to kind of get fo like focus whenever you're holding it, like holding something that's as thin as hair and you're trying to get a focus um, with a handheld microscope. It can be a little hard, so we have a stand to kind of help us. I just turn on the microscope and it just kind of goes here. Oops. And you can kind of like lower the stage like you can put the microscope lower to the stage. This is called a stage um, so that like you can get whatever view that you need. Here we have the first hair strand and my part of my hair, I don't know if you can tell, is um, bleached. So I think this is a really cool like assessment just because we will have some virgin hair and some bleached hair mixed into um, the sample. And even though my hair is bleached, it's actually pretty healthy and you can kind of see that. And what we're looking for are like little bumps on the cuticle or any splits or anything that doesn't make the hair kind of look uniform. And um, overall, like this strand looks pretty healthy. And here we have the second strand. And even though the strand is thinner, it's still pretty healthy. And if you didn't know, your hair actually can have multiple diameters. And just in this case, um, this hair strand just ends up being a lot thinner than the first one. This next one actually has two in the shot because they're kind of close together on the slide. And what I think is cool about this one, these ones are also pretty healthy. What I think is cool about this one is that you can actually see that there's like little brown dots like on the hair strand. And that's actually my hair pigment that didn't get bleached away because like my hair is um, bleached a little bit. It still didn't take away the color. And also like I started growing my roots in a bit more. So um, the ends of my hair have more of a highlight while the top of my head is like my natural hair color. And you can kind of see that transition from the bleach hair to the my natural hair color on this because you can see the pigment on the hair strand. For the sake of time and so that I'm not being too repetitive, I'll show the last couple hair strands in one shot. They're all pretty healthy and don't have much damage. So I'm interested to see how they change whenever we actually apply heat. So we're gonna take these hair strands, wet them, and then straighten them to see if anything changes. I don't know if you could see the hair strands. We have my straightener and So in a case study, it said the woman's hair felt really dry and brittle and it doesn't quite feel that after about 10 swipes. So we're going to wet the hair again and then try to straighten it because she did straighten it twice while it was wet. Now we're going to go in with the straightener again. Every single one of the hair strands showed the bubble forming and we also had one hair strand that broke. Some of the hair strands had additional cuticles that were peel peeling up, which you know that once your cuticle starts peeling up or, or is damaged, it leaves your hair more vulnerable for breaks and splits. So I'm sure if we kept on straightening the hair that eventually more splits and breaks would have happened. The hair definitely also felt super, super brittle. So now you know not only to not straighten your hair when it's wet, but you have to be really careful with your hair when you're styling it and when you're using hot tools because this puts stress on your hair whether you see it or not. Thank you so much for experimenting and learning with me. Please make sure you like and subscribe because it helps me create more videos like this one. As always, I love to learn with you and I can't wait to see what we do next.